And that, the Brandy Wells, Declan Devine's men were decimated by injury and suspension. A ch chance for Mick Cook's Strada United to continue their good form. Here's John Kenny. Informed draw had a head to the Brandywell and started the brighter. Ryan Brennan's header flying over the Derry City crossbar. It set the tone for things to come. Draw had won their last two games in the league prior to the visit to the Brandywell and had also knocked on Dork out of the EA Sports Cup with penalties. And they were ahead on nine minutes as a defensive lapse by Derry City allowed Gavin Brennan to nip in to open the scoring for Draw Another long ball, this time from Derry City keeper Jared Doherty, almost led to an equaliser on the half hour for the home side as David McDay got a sighter on goal. The shot was straight at Gabriel Sava. Into the second half, and Drogheda United, who have impressed this season on the mixed hooks management, doubled their advantage on 48 minutes. Gavin Brennan started the move and was on hand when the Derry City defence failed to clear, and he stabbed the ball past Doherty for 2 0. Gavin Brennan was given a half chance to get another goal shortly afterwards as a deflection fell kindly for him, but he couldn't direct his header on target. That wasn't the end of Gavin Brennan's chances. A deep cross of the far post was inviting for the draw at number 11, but he headed over this time. Mistake by Eddie McCallion led to Drogheda's third on 56 minutes as Fabio O'Brien chased down the loose ball and lifted it over Doherty for 3 0. O'Brien's sixth league goal of the season. Derry thought they'd pull one back late on when Stephen McLaughlin got a header goalwards, but Derry Prendergast on hand to clear off the line for Drogheda. Drogheda and Jer Brennan were in incorrigible form, and he almost got his hat-trick, but for a flying one-handed save by Doherty. Some boos around the Brandywell at the final whistle, as Drogheda moved to third in the table after a commanding 3-0 victory. Yeah, I think to come to Derry and win 3 0. Not too many teams can do that. I thought our performance was excellent tonight. I had a few words with the boys at half time, I thought, when we took the lead. So early, we took a foot off the pedal and we had a few words at half time. I thought the second half proved how good we were. When you're down eight players, it's very difficult, but the reality is, um, you know, I don't think if we tried, we could defend as poorly as what we did there tonight. You know, every one of the goals is, is shockingly bad defending. But I feel sorry for our, our players that worked hard tonight because the reality is, um, and you know, we put it on a plate for Drogheda and, and they were fully accepting of the gifts we gave them. Put it on a plate is right. Uh, we did mention they were decimated by injuries and suspensions, but still, you know, that's a, a result I didn't see coming. Drogheda at the Brandywell? Yeah, well, it's actually not a massive surprise if you look at Derry's form at home. I mean, like throughout the years, I can remember Johnny, myself and your, yourself going down. I've played against some really good Derry sides in the Brandywell and some really poor Derry sides in the Brandywell. But the one thing you could guarantee when you went there is going to be a tough game, no matter no matter what the standard of football they were playing. It seems this year that they've lost a little bit of that. I mean, I think they've only won three out of their, their eight games at home. And that's that's been different to any type of form that they had in the past few seasons. They're missing uh, somebody up front who can put the goals away as well. Zaid is obviously yeah. a, a huge loss for him in that regard. Yeah, that's what I was I'm thinking Declan Devine. I think he should be given a bit of time. You know, he's, he's lost an awful lot of players. I think their top four goal scorers from last season have all left the club. And, you know, people look at McLean. James McLean and, as well, of course, yeah. Well, he's a big loss, but I'd look at someone like Eamon Zaid as being a bigger loss. He scored something some like 24 goals for them last season. Like, that's a massive, massive amount of goals that you have to replace. Um, they haven't been able to do it. I don't think they've scored that many goals. I think 17 goals or something this season. So, you know, that is a massive problem for them. And, you know, he should be given a bit more time, I think, to maybe bring in his type of player. And Roy Patterson was the player that he brought in and it hasn't really worked out for him too well in front of the goal. At least, though, when the, the goals went in there, you saw the Derry defenders look like they really were disgusted with themselves. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, from the defending point of view, they were bad goals. Declan, you know, you hear Declan speaking about it there. But I think we have to give Drott a good bit of credit, Tony. I mean, Mick came in to draw the last year, the last minute. You know, he's given a bit of time and look what he's done at the club in, in, in one season. I think Lying four, in third place in the league yeah, at the five moment. Points That's behind. Not I don't think he could be too happy with me promoting this for him because yeah. they're coming up nicely on the rail and stuff. In, all right, and there's, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but it was a, a great win, a clean sheet up there as well. You're wearing your Drogheda colours today, really, there aren't you? you? <laughs> I did play for one season. Yeah. <laughs> and do you reckon Drogheda can sustain that? I don't know. I mean, Johnny's right. I think that they're... Their plan will be to stay below the radar, have no one speaking about them, but they keep getting results and performances like they're doing. 
they're going to get talked about and, and Mick, the job he's done there has been yeah. class but surely internally they must be saying they have an opportunity of staying staying up there. I mean Rovers are, are they're, they're contenders with Shamrock Rovers now from the third and fourth spot. Rovers are going downwards fast. Is Mick Cook uh, a contender for manager of the season the way it's oh, going? He's, he's, done done great. Great. Yeah. Look, he's done really really well there's no doubt about it he's done well he's got to keep the players in check make sure they're right hmm. and just keep doing what they're doing and then uh, with the two lads Hines and O'Brien up front O'Brien will definitely get you goals if he gets the opportunity Hines can make a bit of form as well and then you have all the Brennans the whole lot of them they've got to get European footballer and Mick gets a sack <laughs> <laughs> so no pressure then Mick 